by your love letters. Let's talk about them. Do we think they are important or not? What situations are important um, to write them in? Here's my two cents. It's a market right now with major lack of inventory and multiple offers. It might not be 18 offers like it was six months ago. It might only be four. But in multiple offers, it is very, very, very strategic to be writing a buyer love letter and prepping your buyers about this and talking to them about it beforehand. So if I was you and I was working with buyers, when you're talking to them in the beginning and you're talking to them about how you're working with them and all the things, I would bring this up. I would bring up that, hey, listen, in this market right now that's very competitive, not only is your purchase agreement very important, but I'm going to talk to you about some other things that really could help you know, set you apart first. Personally, as a busy listing agent, guys, there are times where my, my sellers choose an offer that is not the highest offer because they fall in love with somebody in their buyer love letter. So here, here's the thing. There's, there's a bunch of different things about this. Okay. Where should I start? Let's start with how these look. Okay. Because you want your clients to do them. Obviously they have to do them. Okay. I'm going to show you some examples um, of ones that I have seen and the writing in them. I mean, they have to write it. I always talk to them, be authentic, be, be just authentic about it. But obviously what people want to hear is Oh my gosh, your home is so amazing. You've kept such great care of it. I love your decor. This is perfect. I can, you know, my kid has picked out their bedroom. We visualize our family living here and enjoy like that kind of stuff can really, really matter to people. Homes are very, very personal. If you haven't learned that yet, it's a very personal sale to people. Okay. So these can make a difference. And, you know, if you're close, they can definitely push your client over the edge. So, okay, so let's just talk about the format of these. So this one, I just highlighted some things in these just to show you. Thank you for the opportunity to make an offer on your home. La, la, la. There's so much to love about your home. We really enjoyed the open floor plan with the split level layout. Like whoever says that, that's awesome. Because no one, ever, no one ever says they love a split level. They say they don't like so awesome to compliment their home, right? We would, we would take great pride in owning and caring for this home. We hope you will accept our offer. Darling photo. I have a lot of these, this one, not as fun. No photo. I always encourage a photo, do all the things. If your client can't do it, Put it on there for them. Make it easy for them. Have them send it to you. You do it yourself, okay? Um, your home immediately caught my eye with all the amazing renovations. Here's another one. Again, no photo. I like a photo. Um, you have done a wonderful job maintaining your home. It is clear that you take great pride in it. Notice the cute watercolor of the area by your fridge, which includes some of my favorite places in Minneapolis. I look forward to hosting friends and family in our new backyard. Look forward to hearing back from you. Okay, a lot of these don't have images, which are bumming me out. Then my wife got inside the house and noticed the beautiful wood floors. And of course, the spacious kitchen was her favorite. I proclaimed the, talking about the lower level, it my man cave. Um, love it, all caps. We walked out of your home saying we love it and are immediately putting in an offer to show you that we love it. Thank you for your time and consideration. Super kind. Now this one, whoa, they really took some time and like, wow. This is an example too how somebody could format this up front about them if they want to say things about them. Here's things about me, and then they can add later, you know, genuine content about what they love about the home. I really love, you know, whatever features about the home. So, you know, want to tell your buyers this up front, but for some reason, if they lose, right, if they lost an offer, you know, then they have a template they can use moving forward and plug and play. So, um, but this one is, so this is us. So they put a picture in so they could keep that every time and then change this other things. We could not be more enamored with your beautiful home, planning on starting our own family, warmth and love and as put into the home. We are fortunate, if we are fortunate enough to have you accept our offer. Very, very kind. What we love about your home, like super cute, super cute. Doesn't need to be all that. These are kind of the usually that I see. We don't have kids, like dogs. Yeah. Photos. Good. All the things. Thank you for allowing us to put an offer on this property. Thank you for taking such good care of this property and truly making it a home. We are excited at the possibility of owning this. La la la. I'm reading these because your clients are going to ask you like, what should I put in there? I don't know what to put in there. And I'll say, listen, be genuine. Say some things about who you are. Introduce yourself, say some genuine things, but 
for sure, tell them how much you love the property. Okay. So, okay. We promise to take great care of this home. We promise to make this home happy. That's like so cute. Okay. Here's another one. This is really long. This is a really, really long one. I'd be careful about these two long ones, but whatever. Entering home was the first in our search that we felt we found what we were looking for. Cute, cute. Um, wow. We were blown away by your stunning place. First thing on there. It's clear you take great pride in your home while cared for, maintain a personal sanctuary. We would love the opportunity to make your house our new home. Okay, so you guys, you guys get get the deal on these buyer love letters, okay? Um, I think it's really, really, really strategic. I would make sure these photos are color, pull out all the stops. It's important. Now, let's talk about this because as I have different opinions on it based on if I'm a listing agent or a buyer's agent. Now I'm a listing agent. Um, I, my team works with buyers. If you were a buyer's agent, you're representing a buyer. Yes, 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 yes. Write this letter. Okay. On the flip side to my sellers, just so you guys know, as a listing agent, I am consulting with my sellers and I'm mostly, I'm mostly always saying, Hey, listen, we should really be looking at terms and offers that I can get, you know, that are the most secure, that are the best for you, that have the highest likelihood to get to closing and not have any issues. However, my recommendation to you is to not look at any of these letters until should you choose after. And a lot of my clients will do that. However, strategically, a lot of agents include them in the PDF file. Okay. And that to me is strategy and what I recommend you do in almost all scenarios. So when you send your PDF, all your offer, all your paperwork, your first thing on there should be the buyer love letter. So buyer love letter, if you do a summary, then it's the summary and then it's the lender letter and then everything else. Okay. So that buyer love letter is first. Now, if you are working with an agent and you always got to look at the agent remarks, if those agent remarks say we are not accepting buyer love letters, do not include one. Do not tick that agent off. You are trying to work with them to, you know, you know, put your best foot forward. Don't tick them off. If they've told you no buyer love letters, great. I wouldn't ask necessarily. I mean, you could. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't ask, are you accepting buyer love letters? I would just include it in the PDF. Okay. So this is the truth of what I'm going to tell you as an agent, right? Or as a listing agent, when I tell my buy, my sellers, you know, I wouldn't, I would encourage you not to look at those with their permission. If somebody sends it separately, so they send a buyer, this happens all the time. They send a buyer love letter and then they send their, their offer packet. If they give me permission, I do not send that buyer love letter. They never see it because I've asked them and they never see it. They get, but they get the full offer. Okay. And I give them that. And if they want to see it after, then they can see it after. However, let's be real. If they've agreed to that and I have a PDF file all wrapped up and somebody put the buyer love letter in there, I don't take the time to take it off. Most agents are going to take the time to take it off. We're busy. We're going through multiple offers. Okay. So it's all in there. I tell my clients, Hey, listen, I'd encourage you not to read those, but they do. So I am encouraging you, as long as the listing agent has not told you they do not accept them, you include it all tidied up in one, when one PDF file that looks all pretty and you put it first. Okay. Okay. So, um, when not to include them. So uh, we're talking about a multiple offer market right now. It's very, very competitive, major lack of inventory. People are fighting for offers or fighting for homes, right? That is a time to write an offer. Back two years ago when we didn't have this, um, when there was only one, I mean, we weren't writing these as much. This wasn't as much of a thing, okay? You might want to consider it. If they are lowballing for some reason, if you only, if there's only one offer that you know about, you got to be careful. If there's only one offer, they're lowballing. You want some strategy, you want some some room in there for negotiation, you might not be sit, putting all your cards on the table, right? And saying how much they love it. Now, all of a sudden another offer could swoop in and then, you know, you don't have all, you know, you don't have your buyer love letter out there. So you gotta, you gotta kind of think about that, but there might be some scenarios where you don't do a buyer love letter. So definitely think through that. Okay. 
talk to your buyers about it, be upfront about it. Some, some of my buyers before when I was working with buyers didn't always have one ready. Okay. But I'm talking through all the things up front. So they know strategy and they know if we lose, we're going to circle back and talk about some of these things. Okay. So then they circle back, then they do the love letter. And then if they lose again, hopefully they don't lose again, then they have that buyer love letter and then they can tweak it for the next one and they keep getting stronger and stronger. Okay. Um, that's really it. That's really it on buyer love letters. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really want to say on that. Um, I think it's absolute strategy. I think it's really important um, to do everything in a very competitive market to help your buyers win. Um, and I would tell them that, hey, listen, we we work with a lot of different people. Like for us, we work on a team of 10. So a lot of times we're sharing success stories and there truly are times where they do not pick the highest offer. Now it's probably within five grand is one, two, three, four, five grand apart. So it still has to be strong, but they choose it because they feel more comfortable. So there you go. Buyer love letters, very important in a competitive market. Thanks guys. We'll see you on the next one.